Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. For those of you who are new, my husband and I are documenting our journey through IVF. Just a quick recap, we are in a little waiting period right now before we do our first frozen embryo transfer. I'm getting super excited, but this hurry up and wait phase is just agonizing sometimes. But if you are familiar with IVF, you know that that is literally probably one of the biggest things that people say is you just hurry up and wait for the next thing and then you hurry up and wait for the next thing. Today I want to talk to you about the PGS testing or PGT testing that I talked about in my last video. If you haven't seen that, I will link that right up here. I went over our results, you got to see the phone call that we got and it was very emotional. I wanted to just dive into it a little bit more. and. First and foremost, again, as I've said before, I am not a medical professional. I, everything that I'm going to tell you today is just from my experience and my feelings, my opinions, all of that. So 100% talk to your doctor, talk with your spouse, just make sure you're talking to your person. And none of my opinions or what I say is in any way to steer you one way. I just want to bring you my thoughts and bring you those feelings that and questions that I had whenever we started this journey last year and going into it this time. So if you are starting your own journey on IVF, the questions that when somebody brings up or probably when your doctor brought up PGS testing and do you want to do it? You probably one might not even know what it is and then you have all kinds of questions about what it is. Some of the biggest questions I had or I see in some of the groups that I'm in is what is PGS testing? Is it worth it? Is it harmful? How much does it cost? Overall, just is it worth it? Is the cost worth it in the end? And then one of the biggest questions I had was that I struggled with was just how does this fit in with my faith? Because that's a big thing for me. This is not anything to be taken lightly. This is a very big decision. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. If you choose not to do the PGS testing, there's no problem with that. And if you choose to go that route, that's absolutely fine too. We def we chose to do it and this is just some of the reasons why we chose to do it. I do think that this is a tough question or a tough topic. This is definitely the time where you need to have that open and brutally honest conversation about whether or not this is right for you and for your IVF journey. Some of my fears going into this, um, probably my number one fear was, is it gonna hurt the embryos? Is it gonna hurt our chances? And the number one thing I can say on that is do your research on the lab that is gonna be doing all of your testing. That, that's the best advice I got was just to do your research on the actual labs that are doing everything. Another, I say con, um, is that just because you do this doesn't mean that it increases your chances of a pregnancy or a live birth. You could come out with normal embryos and they still fail. The Once you go to transfer, the embryo never implants or um, you miscarry. So there's no guarantee, there's no 100% that, oh, we got a normal embryo, we're good. There's still lots of things that can go wrong. Other things to think about is the cost. So there is an additional cost to do the PGS testing over and above retrieval piece of this. My doctor told me that on average, it cost between three to $4,000 to do a transfer. Just the PGS testing part for our first cycle was 1,500 and that's because we had five embryos. For us, that made more sense. The emotional the trauma, having multiple miscarriages or failed transfers far outweighed the cost of $1,500 versus possibly 15,000. But the heartache that would have come with it, the biggest thing for us, if I could possibly prevent going through a miscarriage or heartache that, that comes with that, then I wanted to try and, and do the best chances that we could. I've never been pregnant. I can't even begin to imagine the hurt and the pain that comes with a miscarriage. I have had plenty of friends who have gone through it. My heart just aches for them, for you, for anyone who has, has had to deal with that loss. And one other risk that I wanna point out, is you do have the option to retest. And this was the case for us last year. When we went through our first cycle, we came back with five embryos that made it to the blastocyst stage. This is where I say that I was 
very blissfully ignorant because at the time in all of the research that I do with anything that comes my way, I had done all this research on, on the egg retrieval and getting to that stage. I never looked at what happens with the PGS testing piece. And so I thought that, well, we got five embryos, we're good. Like all we're gonna do now is get the grading, like the 4AB or 5AA. I thought those were the results we were gonna get. So when we got the call and we had one abnormal embryo, we had three mosaic embryos and one that was an unknown. They didn't get enough of a sample or something, but they didn't get the results that they could on that embryo. They gave us the option to retest it. And I asked what that involved. And that involves rethawing the embryo, rebiopsying it, and then refreezing it again. That does put pressure on the embryo. You do risk the embryo not making it through the thaw, through the biopsy, refreezing, and then rethawing again, assuming it comes back normal for you to do a transfer. So that's something to consider as well. Yes, there is that option. I know a bunch of people who have taken that option. That was not something that I wanted to do. So when we got the option to do that for our fifth um, unknown embryo, I turned that down. I didn't want to put that little embryo through that. We do still have that one. It is available. Um, we just don't know anything about it. It's a toss up right now. So some of the benefits that you get from doing PGS testing. One, it is not a crystal ball. There is no 100% guarantee on any of this. <laughs> I wish there was, but there's not. The biggest one is that it does reduce the risk of having a miscarriage or having it not work. It does reduce that risk. It does not eliminate it, but it does reduce it because they are checking for the chromosomal abnormalities when they do the PGS or PGT testing. But one of the other things is that we know we have options for future kids now. We know that we have three embryos that are ready to go. We don't, and we don't have to rush. So that was my biggest thing last cycle is I wanted the option to wait on baby number two. I wanna be able to enjoy time with baby number one and not have to like feel like I'm rushed to go right back into getting pregnant again. For us, this gives us a little bit of the pressure is relieved, I guess, because now we've, we know we've got embryos banked and ready to go. and. It's just us being ready now. So that's kind of the good thing. I'm happy about that. And one of the cool things is that we already know what our genders are for our three little babies. And we have two boys and one girl. So it's hard to explain, but for me, this gave me peace of mind. In IVF, you are thrown into a world of unknowns and everything that's out of your control. But I am a researcher, so I started researching and looking up any kind of information I could just let me know that I was doing the best and giving ourselves the best chances that we could with everything that's being thrown at us. So for me, doing the PGS testing just gave me that peace of mind knowing that we were gonna try and transfer with the best embryos that we could to give ourselves the best chance to get pregnant. And that, I, that might be hard to understand and to explain, but that's kind of how <laughs> kind of how it was. So some say that you shouldn't really even consider this unless you're 35 or older. Based on my experience, I don't agree. Um, I think if you're going through IVF, my recommendation to everybody, again, just because of our first round, is to always do PGS testing. If you can afford it, I recommend doing it for the peace of mind, knowing what's what you have ready to go. I recommend it 100%. And these are just some of the risks and the benefits and the things that we thought of and that we were talking about and considering whenever we first got into this whole IVF world. And like I said at the beginning, there is absolutely no right or wrong answer. Either way you decide is 100% what's right for you. And that's all that matters. So that is it for me today, guys. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you click that little subscribe button. I hope this helped. I hope I answered maybe a couple of your questions or gave you some other ideas to think about and to talk about with your husband or your spouse. So next week I will be bringing you a little bit more about how I am prepping personally for our frozen embryo transfer. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you have a great week. I will talk to you next Monday. Have a great week. Take care and God bless.